Hello everyone. I am trying something new today. I am going to attempt a resin bowl. So I have a good quality resin and I'm just mixing my <clears throat> parts A and B. And I have new large measuring uh, cups which is great. Uh, I am mixing two cups total. So one cup of part A, one cup of part B. And this resin, yes, it says tabletop hardener, um, but you can use it for any project where you use resin. And uh, this is on the thicker side. Uh, which is good because um, I've made a couple of tumblers with it and it has just dried beautifully, nice and level, no, pretty much no fish eyes. But anyway, I hadn't been pursuing a resin bowl because I do not own a large silicone mat. And I watch a lot of artists on YouTube um, and they use either a silicone mat or they have some kind of mold. And I just didn't want to buy one. <laughs> I really like repurposing what I have. Uh, so I'm, I'm showing you, it's actually called resin dye. And the first one there was a peacock blue and the second one was just called blue. They're brand new. Actually a coworker gave them to me. It was very kind. And I'm just poking a hole using a push pin in each of them. Uh, I started with one drop of each color. Um, I, I did separate the resin there, as you can see. I just wanted to get a feel for how concentrated the dye was. And you'll see I end up adding, um, I believe, six drops total in each cup by the time I'm finished with it. Anyway, <clears throat> but I had this um, epiphany <laughs> that I could use a pizza pan. And that is what I did. And so you'll see. Um, there's one artist who uses like the back of a tray, but I wanted a more circular shape. I did not want an oblong shape and I didn't have any circular, um, trays where I could use the, the back of them. So, So I finally did. I think I added six drops total of the resin dye. <clears throat> Again, I have one peacock blue, one uh, just regular, more royal blue. And then the third cup I will show you shortly. I add in um, mica powder. That is ca called a uh, pearl white, I believe. Again, I will hold it up to the camera. And so I add, yep, pearl white, two small, it comes with this little scooper spoon thing. I add two of those to the cup. And after I stirred it, I realized I wanted, a, wanted it a little more on the white side versus the off-white side. So I do, <clears throat> excuse me, I do add a few drops, I think three drops of a white resin dye. So this resin dye that I'm using is not the same as alcohol ink. It looks similar, but you can tell the bottles are much smaller and I think the colors are much more concentrated. Had I used alcohol ink, I probably would have done twice, if not triple the number of drops of color. And then I left, I intentionally left clear resin in that larger mixing cup and I end up not using, yeah, I put that to the side. <laughs> so 
So there are parts of this video that are extremely sped up. <clears throat> so right there, I'm just cleaning my gloves. I sprayed some alcohol on them and then I just like to use a coffee filter because there's no lint. It's really important that your table is level. So I always check that in both directions, wiping off any drips of resin because I'm about to pull my tray down and I don't want that completely sticking to the paper on my table. So I am just using regular generic <laughs> plastic wrap and the, <clears throat> excuse me, the um, teeth on it had ripped off a long time ago. And so I just have to use scissors. But one sheet was not wide enough to cover my pizza tray, which I think was is about a 10 inch diameter. It's just a standard pizza tray. So please keep in mind, this is my very first attempt at this. And I've watched mm, probably a minimum of five different artists making resin bowls. So I try to just take what I can from each person and apply it to what I have on hand without having to buy anything new. So I'm just spraying that area with that compressed air uh, because we have lots of pets in our house and you just never know <laughs> what can get on your on your stuff. So I started with a darker blue in the middle and then I'm just going around with the peacock blue and now the pearl white. My intention was not to get perfect rings. You'll see shortly. So even though I checked to see if my table was level, <laughs> um, I guess the tray was not. And so I just <clears throat> tilted it a little bit and then I used uh, broken popsicle sticks as kind of a little wedge to level the tray back out. So I was actually pretty proud of myself because when I was, was mixing the two cups of resin in the beginning, I, that was an educated guess. I really had no idea how much resin to use. I very much could have done, uh, calculations, <laughs> but I didn't, even though I'm a math person, I just, I just went for it knowing that. If I had extra resin, I could easily make a few coasters or, I don't know, something. <laughs> it wouldn't have gone to waste, but I ended up using the full two cups and it really was the perfect amount. So I, it, it was a, there was a little bit of a learning curve with the <clears throat> plastic wrap. I wasn't sure how taut it needed to be, um, because I didn't want, well, I wanted to avoid as many wrinkles as I could in the plastic wrap. However, it was, it was kind of too taut because then the resin wasn't, wasn't coming all the way to the edges like I wanted it to. So you'll see me kind of fiddle with the tape here and there. And then this is the clear and I'm just going to go right in the middle, kind of pushing out the colors, knowing that the colors are going to seep right back into the middle. I'm using blue shades of blue and, and white again. <laughs> Um, similar to the tumbler that I did a few days ago, um, because I don't know, it's just the, it's the color of my employer's logo. And I have an event later this week and I could use a bowl or two at that event. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so I don't know. I was just inspired to, again, use those colors. I can, I can definitely see myself making more of these with 
endless opportunities for different color combinations. So I'm just try trying to keep the tray level. I didn't mention this before, but I purposely mixed my resin first before setting up the tray because I wanted the resin to uh, begin to thicken. It wasn't really that thick when I poured it, but the cups were hot. They were definitely cooking. So, all right. So I'm taking my heat gun and just going back and forth, trying to get a little bit of swirling going on. And at the same time, I'm trying to pop the bubbles, but the heat gun does not do the best job at popping bubbles in my opinion. So you will eventually see me use the torch for that. But I knew I had to be very careful with the torch so that I did not burn the plastic and certainly not the resin itself. So I'm just going back and forth trying to kind of make a pattern, if you will, knowing that it'll change as it dries anyway. I didn't think about it in the moment, but I could have easily taken a popsicle stick and made some swirls in the same direction that I was with the heat gun. So just using the torch with kind of short bursts, making sure I don't stay in one area too long at all. And my only purpose here is to pop air, air bubbles. And I had noticed a little hair in there, so I tried to scoop it out with the popsicle stick, but that did not work. So I always try to keep tweezers handy that I use only for the purpose of fishing hair or bugs or lint <laughs> out of resin and or paint. I was sure to speed up the parts where I was fiddling. <laughs> and at this point, the resin really was starting to harden. So I need to make sure I say this before I forget. It was, there was a high of probably 95 degrees today. And in my garage... I have the garage door open for ventilation. I have a window on the side for cross ventilation. Uh, it was hot. So I initially set my timer for two hours because most artists, oh, there's my food net. So that always goes over top of my pieces while it's drying. So I set my alarm for two hours. Um, knowing that most of the artists that I had watched do this before said like minimum three hours, but I knew that it was a hot day and that this might cure on the faster side. So luckily I came out after about an hour and 45 minutes and checked it and it was ready. <laughs> it was ready to get transferred to the molt. So I'll be showing you that shortly, but I'm so glad I came out and checked it um, prior to the two hour mark because by the time I got to the two hour, it, it may have been too late. I may have had cracking. So the way that I knew it was ready was, I and you'll see shortly, I lifted up the plastic and it did not run and I was able to touch it and it was not sticky. So going for the draping method but I knew I wanted a bowl on the wider side I did not want a narrow bowl that I've seen some artists make so I'm purposely not using 
a flower vase or mason jar or something like that. I knew I wanted uh, a wider mold. So I'm using a plastic bowl and I went back and forth, back and forth. Do I put plastic down over the top of the bowl and then flip the resin upside down or do I just put it exactly the way it is and then and then mold it and that's what I ended up doing so the, the plastic was straight down now I'm just adding more plastic to the top so I'm not touching the resin directly but I went back and forth back and forth back and forth on that <clears throat> rewatched a bunch of people on YouTube to see what they did. So I knew I had to tape down the sides because they kept popping up, but that painter's tape was not strong. <laughs> so I definitely have rogue resin there and you can, you can just watch and see. I, I do struggle with this for a while and ultimately I go and find some duct tape which is much stronger, <clears throat> but I, again, this is my very first attempt, so keep that in mind. But ultimately I end up realizing that <clears throat> I could not put tape on the plastic that was hanging down. I had to kind of either cut that away or kind of roll it up so that the tape went from the plastic that's right on top of the resin to the bowl so the tape had to stick directly to the bowl then it had to go to the um, table just like that and even so it still popped up at times see that right there this is this is I think 10 times the speed I'm just laughing because it just, I was getting a little bit frustrated. <laughs> Ultimately, I abandoned ship on the tape and you'll see shortly what I ended up doing. So <clears throat> that bowl was too narrow. I had a feeling it was, but I just wanted to test it. And then this glass bowl ends up, I think, doing the trick. It took me a few times to get it placed properly. So you'll see me push it down and then take it off and recenter re it. But, um... It worked so I think next time I use this method I will just skip the tape altogether and go straight for the glass bowl Okay, so I got the bowl centered and then I'm just doing a little close up shot so you can see what it looks like from my side. And so what I did was I made another tray <laughs> and made another, another tray of resin. I did not record it. However, I did it almost exactly the same way as before. The only differences are two differences. One, I added a few more drops of the color this time, uh, the color, the resin dye. I think I did, instead of six drops per color, I did maybe 10. Uh, and then the only other difference is I did the rings of color, but then I did not use the heat gun to 
mesh them together to get the swirls. I kind of wanted the resin to just kind of shift naturally and kind of do its thing so that it had a little bit more definition between the colors. So I decided that I'm going to try another method of molding. And so I ended up taking the bare side of the resin tray, whatever you want to call that thing, disc. <laughs> In other words, there's no plastic between the plastic bowl and the resin. Um, the plastic wrap is on the top. Okay. And so I am just positioning it in the bowl making sure that the bottom is flush weighting it down with a bottle of paint and then just adjusting the waves on the sides so that they i don't know i'm not looking for symmetry but i just needed them to look the way i like them <laughs> and then i just set this off to the side and i will show you the demolding process and then i will let you know for sure which method of molding i prefer so far it's this one that i just did but we'll wait and see i'm excited to demold and then compare the two and i just had to give you a quick shot my cat is normally not allowed in the garage especially while i'm working but he weaseled his way in there <laughs> all right so this is the moment we have all been waiting for the demolding and i sped this way up <laughs> it honestly wasn't too bad to get the plastic off but i'm sure you don't want to watch me in real time so i was fairly happy with this bowl uh the colors are lighter than what i would have liked so i'm glad i went a little bit uh deeper with the colors on this second bowl i ended up uh, putting little medicine cups 30 milliliter medicine cups in a few of the curvy areas just to help it maintain And I believe I also sped this up. Yeah. This one also was not too bad to demold. And unfortunately, it cracked. I didn't notice it at first, but it definitely cracked there and at least one other place. So I was bummed. But I continued to get the plastic off, plastic wrap off as much as I could. I was also curious how um, much the shape would change if I left the bowls out of the molds and so that's what I did and they did end up um, flattening out just a little bit but the cracked one is definitely not usable the other one <clears throat> again not my favorite but not bad for a first attempt so I do like the overall shape and color of the second one uh, and the reason it cracked was it just got, um, it hardened too much before I put it in the mold. So I decided to make a third bowl. <laughs> oh, before I do that, I'll show you a close up of the first two. You can see the wrinkles in the resin from the plastic wrap. It really doesn't bother me. It just looks crackled, cracked in a good way. Uh, but it's not, the resin is not cracked um, where you see those little fine lines. That's just from the plastic wrap. But 
I might <clears throat> do some searching on the internet to see if there's any way I can repurpose uh, that second bowl. All right, so here's where I felt like I started to get into the groove. I sort of knew more of what to expect. And so I did not show you <clears throat> how I mixed my resin because I did it the same way as I did for the second bowl. I believe I may have added a little bit more color to make my colors deeper this time. I also found that I liked pouring from the center um, because it essentially flattened the plastic wrap as it spread out to the sides. So I did put clear down first and then as you can see I'm just alternating the deep blue the peacock blue and the white. And as usual, I am <clears throat> messing with the levelness <laughs> of the tray with little pieces of popsicle stick. And it just wasn't getting to that one side, so I went ahead and tilted back and forth. Again, this is sped up quite a bit. It's kind of fun to watch the resin move. But again, this was about two cups total of resin. And I knew I wanted my center dark blue and I knew I wanted my edges with the darker blue. And for this one, I decided that I wanted the edges even darker. So I took the resin dye and I put one drop uh, in each of those locations. I didn't count how many, but I just evenly spaced them. And then took a popsicle stick and went over that area with some swirls a few times because I was intentionally looking for a... Uh, darker edge to the bowl and then I just took my popsicle stick and did some swirls and I thought that looked pretty darn cool almost looks floral spritzed it with some alcohol to get rid of the bubbles uh, especially on the edges I knew my torch should not go anywhere near the edges because if it if it does <clears throat> that that's the part that will be difficult to get out of the mold. Covering it with my net and it there was another heat wave today. High was in the 90 degree range uh, Fahrenheit. I, hit, I noticed a few more air bubbles so giving it one more torch before I leave it alone for I think about an hour and 45 minutes. It was it was hot today. But I made sure that I could touch it and that it wasn't sticky, but it was uh, obviously pliable. And then again, I'm always torn <laughs> which side to put face down, but um, Mixed Media Girl says she likes to put the best side up, meaning that will be the inside of the bowl. So I'm going with what she recommends. And I didn't put any plastic wrap um, on top of the bowl, at least not yet. And you can see I stuck a couple medicine cups in there just to try and help hold the shape. And I needed something heavy uh, to make sure that the bottom was flat because I noticed on the second bowl that I made uh, the bottom did not stay flat, so I knew I needed to weight it down really good. And the medicine cups weren't cutting it, so I went for these paper cups, about three ounce cups. But they have this like plasticky finish on the outside, or at least glossy finish, so I wasn't worried about them sticking to the resin. And there's that shot. So that cured... Throughout the day, I um, 
did the molding in the morning and then this is later in the day again it's been 90 high of 90 degrees consistently so i was optimistic that it would hold its shape if i attempted to demold it yeah i was just making sure it didn't uh start collapsing <laughs> as i was demolding notice it just popped right out And I'm just removing the paint can from the middle. And removing the plastic wrap. It wasn't too difficult. It was, it was a lot easier than I expected. There were probably still a few little shards left in it that I will get out later. But I knew I wanted it to go back into the bowl, not necessarily with the cups and the paint can, but just it needed to stay um, in there a little bit longer because it was um, still pliable. But I did want to give you one last close up. I realized I didn't show it up <laughs> close to the camera. So there it is. That white area that you see that I'm pointing out uh, came actually from that paint can. So that was a mistake. I thought I had plastic wrap around it good enough, but I'll work on getting that off. I, I think I can get it off pretty easily with some acetone, uh, but I just love it. I think the rest of it is great. Um, the edges did turn out to be a little bit darker blue. Not perfect, but hey. I think the third time was a charm for uh, making a bowl. So sticking it back in, it still, still wasn't completely hardened, so I'm just going to let it sit overnight. And I ended up making two more, so in the next video I will show you my fourth and fifth bowls. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.